Clubhouse member video. Originally recorded during the Force for Good class series in January 2016 with Sharon Salzberg and friends. To distinguish between those. Two. Okay, so um, in Pali again or in Sanskrit. Um, they're actually two different words, both of which tend to be translated as desire. Um, but they mean very different things. One is desire in the sense of craving, grasping. Uh, I mean, I do want that car. I used to have one. You know, I had a really old Toyota sedan that had four-wheel drive. Then they stopped making them. But well, I live in Massachusetts, you know, when I'm not here, and, and I have like a really icy long drive. I need a four-wheel drive car. So I, at the moment, I need a four-wheel drive car because my, my current car is really old. Um, so I have been longing, and they don't make that Toyota anymore, but that's what I really want, <laughs> right? But there's, there's a certain kind of reality that needs to intrude since they don't make it anymore, <laughs> right? Um, I used the example the other day of, of uh, once I was teaching here, and I did this kind of out loud meditation on grasping or craving. And that was, I was sitting up here teaching, and I could see, um, it was of course a different exhibit, and I could see this Tibetan wall hanging, this tanka, just kind of over there. And so this was my out loud meditation, I said, I want that. I have to have that. Of course, I couldn't see the price tag, but it was like, I have to have that. OK, I'm going to buy it. And then at that time, I had a, a different sublet apartment, which was really teensy. And I wasn't allowed to put anything up on the walls. So I remembered that, and I thought, I'm getting a bigger apartment. <laughs> and I'll get a one-bedroom apartment, and that way I'll have a room, and the wall hanging will have its own room. And I can get special lighting, and I can really feature it. And, and then I realized, well, you know, to pay even more rent in New York City, I'm going to have to travel even more so I can teach and, and get the money so I will virtually never be in New York. And I'll never see my wall hanging, but I'll own it, right? So that was an out loud meditation on greed. It's not that, you know, it's not that we shouldn't want anything or ever buy anything or, you know, enjoy the things we have. It's not that. But sometimes we get so consumed by the wanting, we don't notice what am I sacrificing in order to have that thing? Or what am I compromising? Or who am I hurting? Or is it really worth it? That I'm never going to see it, you know, but I'll have it. So we get lost in that world of craving. There's another word um, which we also translate as desire, which is not about craving. It's about intention, having a strong intention. And intention is a neutral factor um, in the Buddhist psychology, because intention will take on the moral tone of what it arises with. Right? So you can have powerful intention to make a new car, but what's coming up with it? You know, is it greed? Is it love for humanity? Is it uh, just sort of like massive curiosity? Is it devotion to excellence, like to doing your craft well? Those are different, you know? And so strong intentionality can be a great thing. It's not necessarily a negative thing at all. And, but we, you know, we hear like desire, and we think, well, that's better to just stay in bed, you know, and like not do anything, or if that's what the teachings say, I don't want anything to do with them. And it's not like that, you know? We might have strong strong intentionality, you could call it healthy desire, um, that has nothing to do with uh, the pain that comes from grasping and never being satisfied and, you know, hating every car that I consider because it's not my old Toyota, which is no more. Um, so, you know, they're very different states, actually. 
you, can you? Yeah, I mean, I think it's more than a fine difference. I think there's a big difference. You know, but we we use the same word for both states, and so that is part of the confusion. I think it takes some self-awareness to see the difference because they're really very different. Are you talking about motivation? Yeah. Yeah, I'm talking about motivation. Yeah. I guess it depends on what you mean by naughty. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not a question of okay or not, you know, like what serves you. Like I have a friend who's like a very rebellious sort and she takes a lot of pride in not, in marching to a different drummer, you know, and being her own person and not just listening and being a rebel. And I, um, I teach a, a, an intensive loving kindness course every year for seven days at my own center. And she sat it one year and she came out of it and she said, now I get it. If you really want to be a rebel, be kind. <laughs> you know, be ethical. Like, that's different. <laughs> you know, and I, I think she was right that... Um, in a world where, I don't know if I can bear it for all you people who were here last night, tell the story again. Uh, should I do it? For a world where we are taught um, it's a dog eat dog world. Uh, the story I told was about, I, I was teaching somewhere, a different retreat, so some days, you know, over the course of some days. And, and I said, I just find that such an odd thing to live by. It's a dog eat dog world. Because first of all, dogs don't eat dogs. But you know, what a what a vibe, you know? Um, I will only be happy if I can defeat others and put others down. And and so this woman at the retreat uh, took the microphone and she was really shocked. And she was a young woman, but she still she said. My whole life, I thought the saying was, it's a doggy dog world, D-O-G-G-Y, D-O-G. So I basically like ruined her life, you know, <laughs> by saying, no, it's a dog eat dog world. So the days went on and then we were at the end of the retreat and she took the microphone and she said, I've decided I want to live in a doggy dog world. I don't want to live in a dog eat dog world. You know, that's being a rebel. It was like, I'm not going to live by the common ethic, you know, of denounce everybody and feel better. Uh, it's just not true. You feel worse, you know? So we use our understanding. But that doesn't mean being self-righteous or sanctimonious or kind of holier than thou. You know, it's fun, actually. Uh, To learn about the Tibet House member archives and upcoming Tibet House member trips with geographic expeditions, please visit tibethouse.us. Tashi Dilek, and thanks for watching.